Hi, I'm Dwayne, a JavaScript developer advocate at Vonage. In this video, we will walk through creating a web application where one user, Alice, can place an in-app voice call to another user, Bob. You can find a full write-up of this tutorial and the repository for the complete project in the Vonage API developers documentation. A direct link will be in the description. There are a few prerequisites that will be needed before we can get started. Let's go through this one by one. To be able to use the Vonage Client SDK and CLI tool, an account will be needed. Here's how to get one. Go to dashboard.nexmo.com and if you already have one, sign in with your credentials. If you do not have a Vonage account, you will be able to sign up for one. Then, you will be taken to the account dashboard. Take note of the account's API key and secret. They will be needed later. To be able to carry out tasks such as creating applications, purchasing Vonage numbers, and so on from the terminal, you will be using the Vonage command line interface, or CLI tool. As the CLI tool requires Node, you will need to install that first. Go to Node's download section of their website. Which package you download will depend on the operating system you are using. Once Node is installed, make sure the version is at least 6.0.0, which is required by the CLI tool. You can check this by opening your terminal and running Node space dash V. Next you will install the Vonage CLI tool. As mentioned before, this will make it possible to do many things from the terminal, like create applications, purchase phone numbers, etc. In your terminal, type the following command. Next, you will link the CLI tool to your Vonage developer account. In your terminal, Type this command, making sure to replace API underscore key and API underscore secret with the values in your developer dashboard. In this step, you will create a webhook server that Vonage will send a request to when a user places an in-app voice call. The webhook server will return an NCCO that instructs Vonage on how to handle the call. In this case, connect to the other user of the web application. First, create a new project directory. Inside that folder, initialize a new Node.js project. Next, install the required dependencies. These include Express to use as a framework for the webhook server, Local Tunnel to make the server's endpoints publicly accessible to the internet so Vonage can send the in-app voice call requests and call events. Also, install the client SDK. This will be used when building the client application in a future step. Inside the project folder, create a file named server.js and add the code as shown in the written tutorial. Change the subdomain placeholder with a random string of your choice between 4 and 20 alphanumeric characters, lowercase letters and numbers, no underscores or dashes. Make sure to save the file. The server has two endpoints. The slash answer endpoint is where Vonage will send the user's in-app voice call request. The endpoint will return the NCCO which provides instructions on what to do with the call. In this case, it will speak some text and then connect to the other user of the client-side web application which is extracted from the request query to parameter. The slash event endpoint is where Vonage will send all the events that happen during the call. You can now start the server by running node server.js in the terminal. 
Make sure the terminal says the app is available and take note of the URL. It will be needed in the next step. In a new terminal in your project folder, create a Vonage application with this command. Make sure to change the values of the voice answer URL and voice event URL arguments by replacing subdomain with the actual value used in the previous step. Two files are created in the directory. One is a JSON file and the other is a private key. Also, the application ID is created. Take note of it, it will be needed in the future. In this step, we will create the users that will be able to participate in the in-app voice call. Run the following commands to create the users. This will return the user IDs. In a production application, this is done on the server. The client SDK uses JSON Web Tokens JWTs, for authentication. The JWT identifies the username, the associated application ID, and the permissions granted to the user. It is signed using your private key to prove that it is a valid token. Use the CLI tool to generate a JWT for the users Alice and Bob by copying and pasting the following commands from the written tutorial. Make sure to replace the app ID with the application ID generated earlier and private key with the name of your private key file. Again, in a production application, this is normally done on the server. Let's take a look at the code that will make the in-app voice call. For this tutorial, Alice will be calling Bob. Create an HTML file called client underscore Alice dot HTML in your project directory and add the code from the written tutorial, making sure to paste Alice's JWT you generated in the earlier step to the Alice JWT constant. Notice that once the application logs in Alice using the JWT generated, a click event listener is added to the call button. Once clicked, the application makes a call to the user Bob through the webhook server that we have running. When the call is connected, the hang up button will have a click event handler attached to it that will hang up the call when pressed. Now that we have the application making an in-app voice call, let's look at the code that will receive the call. Create an HTML file called client underscore bob dot html in your project directory. Add the code from the written tutorial and make sure to paste the bob jwt with the one generated earlier in a previous step. Once bob is logged in with the jwt and an incoming in-app voice call happens, a notification will be shown and a click event handler will be added to the button that will allow the user to answer the call. The notification will also change as the call status changes. Let's run the application. Open client underscore Alice dot HTML in a browser tab. Load client underscore Bob dot HTML in an incognito tab. You may need to allow your web browser access to your microphone and speaker. Headphones may be needed to prevent audio feedback. Press the call button in the client underscore Alice dot HTML tab. Notice how the status changes in client underscore Bob dot HTML and click the answer button. Now you should be able to test the two way in app voice call. Press hang up to complete the call. To get more information on the topics covered in this walkthrough, and a link to the completed code, please visit the written tutorial in the developer documentation. While you are there, take a look at the wide range of other offerings from Vonage and see what else you can build. Thanks.